guys, welcome to VP Java. Today I'm going to show you a cool little hack dealing with Docker logging best practices. Now, if you have already an existing Java application that you want to containerize and you don't really know how to go about implementing Docker logging best practices, do not modify your existing configuration or code to comply with sending your logs to standard out and standard air. I'm going to show you a cool little hack. All we have to do is modify the Docker file using some simple sim links and all of a sudden your application will be sending off its logs to standard out and standard air without having to change anything in your application. Before we hit the code, I'd like to show you the beach, which is where I'm heading right now actually. Beautiful beach in Santa Maria in the Azores, small little island. I've already talked to you about this little island in my Facebook posts and stuff like that. So I'm going to go for a little swim and after that I'll show you how to get that little hack working for your logging. Alright guys, so let's get into it. So I've already written the blog on this thing. Now we're going to take a look at the YouTube video tutorial which I'm going to cover some more aspects that weren't covered in that blog. So let's get right into it. First of all, we're dockerizing a Java application, right? This is MVP Java, so the emphasis is on Java applications. A very simple application that I wrote here. Uh, if we just go to the only source file, actually, it's um, a logging demo application. And you'll see here <coughs> the um, Java Util logger is just gonna be in an endless loop you can see that we got two files being written to here. We've got the, they're both in the temp directory. So Java app.log, that'll contain all our, our log messages. It'll basically contain everything. And then we're just gonna have a separate file here just to contain the errors. So we're actually writing two files on the file system in an endless loop. And it's every two seconds here. I got a timer every two seconds it's writing this. So this is obviously going to be writing on a high enough frequency on the, file system now since we're going to be dockerizing this okay this will be inside docker's file system so i want to actually hold off on talking more about that but there is a, an issue with this kind of continuously writing to the file system in a container that i'm going to talk to you about later on in the video okay so let's just kind of now hone in on how we're going to not modify any of this code it's the whole point we don't want to modify our application right and we want to send all our logs to standard out standard error so that docker can actually aggregate all those logs and show them to us in the console if you go to docker hub i actually have a couple of docker files one of them is this one over here which is the one i want to concentrate on we're going to eventually copy over the jar file of that java application okay we're not touched we're just going to take the jar file and we're going to copy it into the slash temp directory inside the docker container then we're going to run a couple of commands and this is the hack all right we're going to use a couple of symbolic links over here to map standard out to that file that contains all our logs that you just saw in the source code and on the same line here we're also going to do the same thing for standard error and we're going to take all the error messages that are being locked to that error file and we're going to redirect them to the standard error all right we're just going to on the last line execute the uh, jar file so it can start actually doing the logging and i'm just going to demo this now uh, live in terms of how you know and what is going on in the background I've also created another Docker file here, and you'll notice it's the same thing, except I don't have the sim links. They're actually missing. That's why it's called no sim link, okay? So I've already built these guys for you, and I've tagged them, right? So you'll notice here, there's a couple of tags. There's one called to file, which is the one that doesn't have the symbolic links. We're actually going to be writing to the containers file system. And these two here, symbolic links and latest, are the exact same. Latest is just there for convenience. So that's the Docker file that has the symbolic links in there. So let me showcase this for you, all right? So here are the commands. So I'm gonna use this one here to file, right? So this is the one that's not using the hack. So you're gonna to go to your X term, you're gonna paste this, right? And it's gonna go download this thing from MVP Java's Docker Hub account. I already have this up and running anyways, all right? Yeah, I have it in my local cache. And the other one I'm gonna run is the one with the sim links. Now, by default, it'll be latest, right? So if I do latest, right? Or if I just don't write it at all, it'll actually write the Docker command. Actually, 
let me just go get the, the name of the container. That's uh, because the container name is the same. I can't do that, right? So this one has a different container name. Let me go back up and paste this. All right, so now I got two Docker containers running. Now I'm not gonna go into you know the whole command of you know what I just did. If you wanna know how Docker works, you can check out my other MVP Java uh, Docker tutorials, all right? But for now, just know that I'm running this uh, jar file in a Docker environment. So Docker container ls, I should see two uh, Docker containers running, right? So as you can see, I'm running those two. And if I actually wanna see what's going on in terms of, you know, if one of them is writing to the file system, Docker's file system, and one of them isn't, we should see the one that has the tag to file continuously writing to the Docker file system and the other one with the symlinks not. So I'm actually gonna execute this in a watch command so I can continuously loop in and, and see what's going on here. And I'm gonna say Docker PS minus s here which is going to take a look at let me kind of reduce the font size here and what i really want to concentrate on in this output here it'll show us the size of the file system and stuff like that you can see on this line over here this is the one with the symbolic links and look at this here 32.8 it is not growing in size this is the size of the container's right layer and the one with two file you can see here our logging is occurring two files. We've got two log files continuously logging every two seconds. And you can see that this is growing and growing and growing and growing. So this is something you want to avoid actually, all right, in a Docker environment is writing to the container's file system. Now, hold on to the end of the video. I'm going to explain to you why, right? But this is a nice little way to kind of compare them side by side and see, you know, actually see what's going on. So let me kind of break out. Actually, I'm gonna leave that up, up and running. And what I wanna do here, I wanna say Docker uh, container logs, and I'm gonna do the one, um, well, it would probably help if I spell container, right? Right, container logs. And I wanna see the one with two file. Now, I'm gonna tail this or follow this. I'm gonna say minus F or minus minus follow. And you can see, that I'm only really getting the error stream here, right? That's because the Java um, util logger, um, logger only really outputs the standard error to the console. It doesn't kind of aggregate all the other stuff. So we don't really have all our logs using the Docker logs command available to us if we're using the version that I didn't redirect everything using the symlink. So that's not really cool. If we go and take a look at the one with the symlinks that I set up, now you can see that every single one of the logs that were written to those two files, which is not writing to the Docker file system, as you can see in the X term above, is being redirected to these two streams. I have everything here being redirected to my uh, external console, which is great. Now you may ask yourself, well, you know, this is, this is great, I got everything here, but you know, how do I get that kind of off the machine, centralize it, get visibility, get uh, metrics on it, get insights on it. And, and that's really the way to go. And that you would use like a logging driver to get you going. Now there's great logging drivers out there. There's tons of them, all right? Uh, one that I like to use is the AWS uh, cloud logging driver, which sends everything to CloudWatch. I'm gonna actually come up with another video to show you guys how to do that. But the first thing you need to do is you need to redirect your logs to standard out and standard air, which is Docker's best practice. Now, I just showed you how to do that without changing any code whatsoever. All you did was add a couple of symlinks in your Docker file and you're good to go. You're following best practice. And again, we're bypassing the container right layer, which is exactly what we wanna avoid, all right? So let me actually explain to you why we want to avoid that in the next segment so there you go guys there we have a nice little hack for you to now virtualize or containerize excuse me there's another word for it dockerize your application and follow docker's logging best practices now another thing i want to tell you guys about is another advantage of doing that 
is that we're bypassing the container's right layer, which is actually causing us a performance hit when we're writing to the container's file system. So that's something that's totally to be avoided. So when you're logging to files in your container, you're actually incurring a performance hit. And by bypassing that with those sim links, we do not get a performance hit and we follow best practice advice. So there you have it guys, hope you like that hack. Until then, I'll begin the next one ready. Ciao guys.